When it comes to improving your forehand, one of the biggest things you might be struggling with is your spacing, either getting too close or too far away from the ball. So what I want to do in this video is explain a three-step process that you can use to fix your forehand spacing. I hope you find the video helpful. If you do, it'd be awesome if you give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't already done so, really appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel as well. So the first step when it comes to fixing your spacing on your forehand is to focus on it and make it a priority within your training. The mistake that most people make is they try and do too many things in one go and it's just simply not possible. Our brain can't process that information. So if you're going out there going, right, I'm going to work on my split step, I'm going to work on my unit term, the way that I take my elbow back, then I'm going to work on my spacing, then I'm going to work on my racket lag, and then I'm going to work on my contact and my follow through. It's just too much stuff. You're going to end up not improving anything. You have to start at the start and focus on one thing at a time, getting a, a number of repetitions until it's done until it becomes a habit and then move on to the next thing and spacing is obviously a really important place to start because it com comes before a lot of the other stuff now this was something that i had to do a lot last year when i was learning to play left-handed i had a real habit of getting too close to the ball so i was spending a lot of time on court just going okay focus on the spacing all i'm doing is just focusing on being the right distance from the ball just thinking about getting that right distance okay spacing maybe using this right arm as a marker for me because i was too close to the ball and just kind of concentrating on okay just being that correct distance from the ball now what i wasn't doing is going okay don't get too close to the ball don't get too close to the ball because every time you say that to yourself you're literally telling yourself to get closer to the ball so you want to phrase it in a positive way so keep your distance think about the space focus on space whatever it is however you want to explain it to yourself but you do need to make it a priority and it can literally take several thousand good quality repetitions before it becomes a habit but by doing that it's then basically going to fix the issue and then you can move on to the next thing although there are certain things that can cause problems and that's why I want to talk about step two so other than not focusing on it, the biggest problem for most people is lack of ability to predict where the ball's going accurately enough. And really, this is the problem for most people. Unless you grow up playing tennis at a really high level, it is very unlikely that your visual system functions at a high enough level to accurately judge distance and depth and have the spatial awareness to predict where the ball's going. This is why you can generally get your spacing figured out when a coach feeds you the ball into a certain spot because you know where it's going, so you can kind of think about it and compensate and overcome the issue but when you start to rally with someone who's at a lower level and you don't know where the ball's going or when you start to play points and matches that's when it gets really challenging to solve the spacing issues because your brain's got to think about all this other stuff so it's no longer able to compensate for your lack of ability visually the good news though is that's something that you can improve with training this is the process that i had to go through myself as a right-handed player it's something i struggled with for a long time and it really held me back by working on my visual system I was able to fix this problem and turn my forehand into a real weapon and obviously now that I'm learning again left-handed it hasn't taken me long to get good with my left hand because my visual system functions properly so now it's just a case of focusing on it within my practice and then things start to change but if your visual system can't do that well it can't do it which is why it's really important to spend time working on it to help you with that part of things i've got a free vision program to to help you out i'll place a link down in the description so you can uh, check it out and i'll also place a link up there so you can get hold of that if you want to because if your visual system can't do it it's really going to make this very problematic Okay, so now that you've made it a priority within your practice and you're starting to train your visual system, the next step in the process is to work on your footwork. And it's really important to do this without the ball first. Tennis footwork is really unnatural, so you need to uh, do a certain number of repetitions. Normally, it's a couple of thousand before those footwork patterns become habits. And once the footwork patterns are habitual, they're automated, your brain's going to recognize where the ball is. You're just going to automatically do it. You're going to arrive at your shot in a balanced position. So what I wanna do is just show you a few simple combinations that you can start to practice and work on. You can do as part of your warm up while you're on court. And some of these you can even do in your front room. 
Okay, so we're going to do four different combinations in a neutral stance, four different combinations in an open stance, and it's just a case of accumulating enough reps so then your brain can start to blend them in. Because especially when we get to the wide one, it's going to seem a little bit artificial and you might never use it exactly like you're practicing it, but by storing these movement patterns within your brain, it will then be able to draw on them as it needs. So we're going to start out just by stepping into a pivot step and then hitting a neutral stance forehand. So I'm just going to do three reps of each. You could do as many as you want, depending on what time you've got. Second one, shuffle step, and then hit the forehand. Shuffle step, hit the forehand. Shuffle step, hit the forehand. Now we're going to go for a crossover step, and then step in and hit. So we're basically just covering slightly different distances. And one last one with that crossover step. And then the final one we're going to do is going to be a crossover step and then a shuffle step. And that's the one that's going to feel the weirdest, but sometimes you need to get distance and then just make adjustments at the last minute. That's why we're practicing it in this way. And then one more. And then we're going to do the same process, but working on an open stance. And when you do the open stance, you can do a kickback, you can do a mogul step, you can do a two foot pivot step, whatever you want. I'm going to start by doing kickback because that'd be more appropriate. So I'm just going to step into an open stance and do a kickback. Remember, all we're practicing is the spacing from the ball. Now I'm going to do a shuffle step. Again, shuffle step. One final one. For the next two, I'm going to hit a mogul step because it's a little bit more appropriate for the wide ball. So I'm going to start with that crossover step, mogul step. One more of those. And then that final variation where we're doing crossover step, shuffle step. And then one last one. So that three-step process is going to help you to fix your forehand spacing, even if you've struggled with it for years. The important thing is, though, it takes as long as it takes. It might be three months, it might be six months, it might be a year. That's just how long it takes to learn. You have to keep prioritizing it within your practice, keep focusing on it. You have to work on your visual system so your visual system is functioning at a high enough level. So start out with that free program that's in the description and up there. That's going to take you part of the way. Depending on what your starting point is, you might need a little Little bit more work if that's the case i've got a whole program where i help players with this sort of stuff but once you've signed up for the free program i'll tell you more about it and then you've got to work on the footwork and it's literally a case of just doing enough repetitions and keeping on focusing on it until you fix the problem once you fix the spacing aspect you're going to have a much better forehand in general then you can start to move on to the next problem and i know this might sound a little bit slow and a little bit long term but the reality is that most players get to a certain level and then they never fix or improve anything and they just end up spinning the wheels because this is what it takes to actually make improvements. So hopefully this video has been helpful. If it has, like I said, it'd be fantastic if you give me that thumbs up. Obviously, if you've got any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to you as quick as I can. Um, one last thing, if you want to learn more about timing, you might find this video here interesting because it's going to show you a few different assessments which can maybe help you to identify things that are going on in your body that are preventing you from having good timing.